All right, I'm now about to install the balance shaft. Um, I've got the balance shaft cleaned. I've got the, uh, the uh, screws that to hold the uh, retainer plate in cleaned up. There's the retainer plate. I never really took it apart. They needed to get the retainer plate off. You have to take the front gear off. I didn't bother to do that. So I've cleaned this balance shaft. This is a ball bearing. The outer race does not need any oil. The back is a, is a uh, sliding bearing, so it needs oil. So I'm going to put oil on the uh, in the uh, bearing inside the block, and then I'll smear a little bit on the journal there. But um, the front, you uh, you oil the the ball bearing in here before you put it in. That's how I oil. So that's what I'm about to do. Uh, I'm not really going to show a video of how I'm putting it in since it just slides in and then you screw it in. So these two bolts get, uh, these two bolts right here get Loctite, blue Loctite, thread locker, not red. Red would be name near impossible to get out. So I'm putting blue Loctite on there to keep it from vibrating loose. And then I'm going to torque them down. I have a, uh, these are, uh, these are Torx, by the way, I took Torx, maybe T25, I'm not sure. I'll let you know a little bit. But these are torch bits, and I have an inch pounds torque wrench, so uh, I'm gonna torque them to the right value. By the way, I'm getting all my torque values and my engine specs, clearances, and all that off the internet. There's a manual called uh, it's for a 4.3 Vortec V6. It's for Kohler, K O H L E R industrial and marine engines. So that's where I'm getting all my uh, clearances and specifications from. So. I'm about to slide the balance shaft in and then I'll torque it down and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, the balance shaft's now installed and I had to kind of, uh, the, the ball bearing is sort of not press fit, but it's it's a pretty snug fit into the block. It's not a sliding bearing, so it doesn't get old. And I kind of had to hammer it in with the uh, end of a wooden hammer, with a wooden handle right there. I don't hit it with metal, don't hit it with a hammer, but hit it with the uh, wooden end of the, ha of the hammer uh, so you don't damage any of the gears or the bolt there and just knock it in place. Um, you can tell it's going in because the back bearing will slowly go on into the, into the bearing there. But um, so anyway, it's, it's turning free, it's real smooth. So it's in the two bolts on the front that hold the uh, retaining plate in right here. There's, you can see the retaining plate there. The two bolts are 106 inch pounds each. And I put blue Loctite on. So, Next is install the camshaft and uh, its retaining plate and then the gear that ties with the uh, balance shaft you line up there's a mark right there Let's see if we can get a clear picture of that mark so there's a mark there and you line that up with the mark on the cam gear and then those two are timed and then when you put the timing gear on chain on the crank sprocket right here and this will already be timed and then you time the, the camshaft with the engine and everything will be timed so that's how you time both shafts at one you time this you time the balance shaft first then you time the camshaft with the engine all right about to put the cam in and uh we'll see how it goes okay i've got the balance shaft installed and i'm trying to time the balance shaft with the camshaft so you can see there's a dot on the camshaft uh, the this is the drive gear for the balance shaft and it's sitting on the cam. I've got the cam uh, retainer plate uh, screws fastened in at 106 inch pounds by, uh, behind this behind this gear. Um, so right now I've just placed the drive gear, this gear, onto the camshaft such that the dot on the, that dot there on the balance shaft and the dot on the drive gear line up. Uh, line up and uh, line up with the center line of the two shafts a little bit too close so the center line through this shaft and through that shaft would go through the two dots so that's how you time that now that those two are on now I'm going to put the the uh, timing chain uh, and the timing gear on the camshaft and line them up there's also an arrow if you see the arrow right there on the cam gear excuse me that's the crank gear that drives the camshaft so there's a dot on the, or some kind of mark on the cam gear that you line up with that the same fashion that you do with these two. Now these are now that these are lined up, I can rotate them anywhere I want to to make it um, to, because it'll come back to the same spot. So um, that's done. Now I'll put the cam gear on and tighten down the three bolts. And uh, 
I'm not sure what the torque is on those, but I'll, uh, I'll find out and put it in the next video. All right, this uh, video shows the, all the cam and the balance shaft uh, timing assemblies in place. The uh, three cam sh sprocket to uh, sprocket to cam retaining bolts are 18 foot pounds, which is the same as six, 216 inch pounds. It's uh, 18 times 12. 216 inch pounds on these three bolts. In order to uh, um, keep the motor from spinning, I had to flip it upside down and wedge a screwdriver in underneath the uh, so we can turn this thing over here. So I turned it over like this. And I wedged a screwdriver in, in between here to hold it from turning while I tighten up these three bolts. So those are all tightened up. The next thing to do is put on the, uh, this is actually a, uh, this is a fuel injection um, trigger wheel. It's called the, um, what do they call it? Uh, three, uh, it's a three pulse trigger wheel. You can see it's got three machined uh, spacers or three machined bosses on it. And that's what triggers the uh, crank trigger, crankshaft trigger when you fuel inject these engines. Um, I'm an expert at fuel injection. I know how to do it. I'm not gonna go into detail right now. I'm just gonna say that uh, you have to put this, even if you don't fuel inject it, you still have to put that on because it acts as a spacer. Let's see if I get this thing rotated around. Oh, by the way, I like to rotate them around a couple times and make sure the timing marks come back and line back up. Let me see if I find that timing mark. Where is it at? Um, oh, there it is right there. So there's the mark. I'm trying to get that all the way back around to the bottom. Get out of your light. And it's coming. Okay, it's, it's out 180 degrees. So I'll have to rotate another 180. Let's do this. Uh, see if we can get this thing coming around. So here comes the marks. You can hardly see them. So there they are again. So those two marks right there are lined up right there. Sorry for the light. I can't, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's your two marks lining up. And then since the balance shaft's already, or was already timed, I can't see it, but I know it's timed all right. So it's all timed, everything's ready to go. Uh, time to put the uh, and the crank trigger only goes on one way uh, it doesn't it'll go on the other way but it doesn't make any sense because it binds with the chain so this goes on the this key to the crankshaft and it butts up against the timing gear and from this point you put the uh, timer cover back on and then the harmonic balancer presses against that and that's what sandwiches all this together keeps it tight so I'm about to put the timer cover on and uh, it's got a, a reusable seal on it. Um, the instructions claim not to reuse the timing cover, but I don't see why you shouldn't be able to. The seal looks good, and uh, uh, I can put some silicone up, sealing up here in the in the corners to make it work like it did before. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna well I'm gonna clean it and then use it. But anyway, the time time is all done. I'm about to put the timing cover on, and then I can start with the pistons and rods. All right, looks to me like the key to making this um, reason the plastic timing cover is down here in the corner. You need wet silicone to seal up the timing cover and the oil pan seal all at one time. Uh, you don't want to fasten this down with silicone, have it dry, and then come back and hit the oil pan again after the fact because uh, then you'll have a, a dry joint to a wet joint of silicone. So you want a wet silicone joint all in this corner for the oil pan seal and the front timer cover seal. So I've only finger, I've installed the timer cover, but I've only turned the uh, bolts on finger tight. When I get ready to put the oil pan on, I'm going to pull this uh, cover back out, put some gray uh, Permatex silicone seal it in this corner against the face the, where the gas, this uh, timing cover rests against the block on both sides, both corners. And also some down in this corner where the, the oil pan uh, gasket fits uh, along and also in this groove here. So that's how I plan to reuse the timing cover. Let's see if that works. <laughs> 